and the country found them ready at the starting call for men. On the walls of the cell block at Richmond Castle, there are over two and a half thousand graffiti inscriptions, left by perhaps a thousand different people across 70 years of the 20th century. Together, these inscriptions offer a remarkable expression of conscience, of faith and politics, of love and friendship, pride and loyalty, and quite simply, of fun. There's quite a lot known about some of the people who were held in the cells, why they were here, what the meaning was behind what they wrote. Hidden behind the door of this cell is an inscription written by Percy Fawcett Goldsborough. At only 20 years old, he was put into the cells at Richmond for standing by his beliefs. Percy was a socialist conscientious objector to the First World War. He refused to fight, or as his graffiti puts it, he refused to be made into a soldier. For the majority of graffiti, the stories are less clear, and we know little about those who created them. The downstairs corridor is smothered in layers of inscription. One of my favourite scenes is here. It shows, I think, a First World War battle scene. Two ships, civilian ships, with uh, a biplane defending the skies under Zeppelin attack. This has been adopted and adapted in the Second World War. Now we have a U-boat prowling the waters. We have British and German planes undertaking an acrobatic dogfight in the skies. And then once again, another layer, we have someone who's on a rather crude rocket here and perhaps an early jet plane suggesting the end of the Second World War and the early Cold War period. And then over in the corner here, this rather unsettling, if slightly comic image of Hitler. The cell block forms a remarkable and nationally important document. If these messages had been written on paper, they'd be in a climate-controlled archive. Instead, they're on the incredibly delicate walls of this 150-year-old building. Well, you can see that the ceiling used to be covered in lime, much like the walls, but it's, it's been lost in most of the, well, in a great extent of locations. And that's where you can still see the salt patches. And it really illustrates the extent of, of liquid moisture ingress that we've got at this level. Here you can see the pattern of deterioration caused by, by the salts in the walls. So you can see the flaking and powdering of, on the surface. Here is really an example at a small level where the salts have crystallized just below the surface and they're pushing off the lime wash and that will cause a loss. Investigating how this building behaves, how it reacts to climate, even to my breath, is fundamental in understanding how to fix its problems. English Heritage is now looking at a conservation programme which can protect this building, this remarkable resource, for the future.